guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Bushido Breaker. Bushido Breaker is for two to four players, takes about a half an hour to play, and it's ages 12 and up. In the game Bushido Breaker, you're going to be playing as either the samurai or the ninjas. The samurai are trying to protect the shogun, who is hidden in his shogun chamber, and the ninjas are trying to assassinate him. As a ninja, you're going to be starting off at the bottom of this tower and climbing your way through into the shogun's chamber to um, eventually assassinate him. You can win that way, you can also win by destroying all the samurais in the locations that are defending the areas, and the samurai is trying to wipe out the ninja. This game is a hidden movement game in which you're going to be placing cards face down and flipping them face up and performing the action that you have presented. Now certain actions are going to be to disable alarms, to kill other samurais, to do range attacks, and so on and so forth, whereas the shoguns are going to, uh, the shogun characters, or the uh, samurai, are going to try to place down cards to prevent that from happening, maybe blocking the escape routes, or moving one of their guys, or protecting their uh, sh Shogun Samurai. Uh, not only that though, but there's also additional cards in the game that you're going to be getting, such as special ultimate cards, which we'll talk more about. Uh, and that is the basic idea. It's usually a 1v1, 2v2, but you could also play a 2v1 as well. So let me go ahead and show what the game looks like. So here we have Bushido Breaker, and as you can see, there's a ton of stuff going on here. So I'm going to go ahead and break it down for you. The first thing is, are you playing with two, three, or four players? In this variant, we're going to be playing with two players. And uh, you can go ahead and look on the rule book here, and it'll tell you the difference for two, three, or four players here. And as you can see here, you've got these three locations, these two, and then this one here, which is the Shogun's Chamber. And then you're also going to have decks of cards. So these are all separate here. Uh, these over here are for one player. These are for another player. And then, of course, these two stacks are for two other players. And then you've got these special abilities here. You've also got additional cards here, which would increase the playing board for more players. And this little checklist here, which is what the ninja is going to use to show where he's moving to, what a location he starts on and what ability he's using on the turn because normally the samurais will not know what he's playing. You also have three nice reference cards that are both front and back that explain what blocks what and it's fairly simple like that. And then you're also going to get a box and of course the rule book here. So to begin the game, if we're playing a two player game, we would not need the additional decks here. You go ahead and set that aside. But you would also go ahead and have each player choose one of these secretly. There's special abilities that will do certain things differently, which I'll explain during the review. We'll just go ahead and select run randomly at this point though. Of course, the samurai will also do that. And it's gonna be different in a three and a four player game as to who gets to have the special abilities and who does not. So here, he can have this one here. Here. We're also going to go ahead and give this card, this uh, stack here, to uh, or this uh, thing here, to the ninja player, where he's going to use a pen uh, or a pencil, and he can go ahead and write down his location he's going to start at. It could be either this Azuna gate or it could be the Nishi gate. He would write that down on the first section there, so he would know where he started. He would also take all of these cards into his hand. But before he did that, I'll go ahead and move these guys away too. We don't need that. Before he did that, let's go ahead and talk about the different cards in the game. So you've got the four basic cards that you always start with. You've got the shuriken, which is a range attack, and you have a kunai, which is a melee attack for the ninjas. You've also got the katana for the samurais, and you've got the yumi, which is the range attack for the samurai, and of course, you've got the special card, and then the th four main ones as well, which basically do uh, either the similar things or countered things to the ninja. The first thing you need to know is that katanas will always be kunais, and uh, yumi will always be shuriken. Basically, the samurai is always going to have the advantage when it comes to combat, but that's okay because the ninja's main goal is to destroy three of these, uh, uh, destroy all of the uh, samurais, or to flip over three alarms, basically to trigger, uh, to disable three alarms, and get to the shogun and destroy him. So, uh, there's a couple other actions as well, such as the samurai is able to search an area. As long as there is a samurai on the area, he's able to use these cards. If there isn't one, he's not going to be able to, which is great because that means that you can use the move action. So, a samurai can move from one location to another location. Uh, you've also got guarding the exits. If uh, a ninja tries to move from one zone to another zone and you guard the exits, you'll be able to see them and then you can actually notice the ninja. The ninjas are going to lose if they get noticed twice because they're going to get noticed the first time and then they're going to get captured. Si uh, similarly, if they get attacked and uh, get, or get countered, then so let's say that he's right here and he tries to uh, kunai me, I can katana him as the samurai and he will die. Now, of course, the ninja has a special ability which is a smoke bomb they always start with and he can use this card if he ever gets noticed or if he gets attacked and basically he'll 
to reset the round and remove the smoke bomb from play and thusly staying alive one additional. It's almost like an additional life. Uh, he's also got checking the alarm. So if he tries to sabotage an alarm, the samurai can stop that by checking the alarm. It will make him get noticed and he will not be able to trigger their alarm there. And searching the area is nice when the ninja tries to hide in the same location. If you happen to search the area and they are hidden there, then you're going to notice him as well. So the ninja's gotta be very, very stealthy. And then you've got, of course, these bonus abilities that you can use once and they do some crazy stuff, which we'll talk about later. So each player is going to take these cards and they're going to put them in their hand and hide them or just make sure that nobody else can see them. And then the game is going to begin. The samurai is going to start by waiting for the ninja to place down his location on here. And then the ninja and the samurai are both going to put a card down. So for instance, if the ninja wants, let's say he wants to sabotage the alarm and he's currently at the Azuna gate, he's gonna put this card face down and the samurai is not gonna know what that is. Now let's say the samurai thinks that the ninja is trying to kill his guard over here at the Nishi gate. The samurai can go ahead and place down a katana face down and then they're going to not reveal the ninja, but reveal the samurai card and pick the location. So he's going to say katana nishi gate. And in which case the ninja is going to respond by either showing that he was attacked, showing that um, his ability or action has been used. So the, 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 for instance, this ability here is the uh, sabotage alarm. He doesn't actually have to reveal that. He can put this back in here and then simply sabotage the alarm at the location he's currently at, which now gives the samurai some knowledge. He knows that the ninja is currently at this location. So whenever you use a katana or a yumi, they're going to get discarded along with a smoke bomb or if, they, if you use a kunai or a shuriken, those also will get discarded. So you have to be very careful because you only have so many of them. This one is going to go away and the game is going to continue. Once again, they're going to select one. He knows he's here, so he's going to say, maybe I'm going to go ahead and guard the exits, right? But the ninja is very smart and says, I know he's going to try and make, try and notice me. So I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to hide and place a kunai here, which means he's going to attack this guard, which will then remove the ability for him to do certain things in this location. So the guard's going to, the samurai's going to flip over and try and guard the exits and then the ninja is going to simply remove this card and then make this guard die. Whenever a guard dies, it's gonna be flipped over just like that. And this card's not gonna be revealed. So he doesn't know if it was a range attack or a melee. Of course, he's pretty sure because he's at this location and he just killed this unit. So it's more than likely gonna be a melee attack because those range attacks are very useful. You could actually attack an adjacent target. And that's the basic idea of the game. You're gonna continue playing the game. The ninja's going to be moving from location to location. If they ever get noticed or killed, they can use a smoke bomb to save themselves once. They can choose to hide. And with, as long as they don't get found out, they can stay in a location. They can move from one adjacent location to another. They can simply attack with range attacks. They've got their kunai, which is for their melee, and sabotaging the alarms, which is important, as well as, yeah, the last thing there. And, of course, they have their special ultimate ability. But, like I said before, if the ninja is able to disable three alarms, get to the shogun, and remove him, your shogun is dead. The game is over for the samurai. And you're gonna go ahead and start again if you'd like. Or the other way is if every single one of these guards here is killed. If they all die, there's nobody to guard the samurai and that is also a game over. And of course, the way the ninja dies, which is nice, tells you right here. But if you get noticed, you check here. If you get noticed twice, you're captured. And if you get killed by being blocked by your, one of your attacks, you will die. However, there's still that smoke bomb. That's the basic idea of Bushido Breaker. Let's go ahead and talk, talk about the review. So before we get into the review, let's talk about a couple caveats. The first thing is that ninjas are not able to move twice in a row, so once for, for, for two rounds, and they also aren't able to hide twice in a row because that would make it unfair for the samurais. The samurais only have a certain amount of attacks and thus it would relinquish them certain amounts of attacks. So you just can't do that. That's just part of the rules. Also, let's go ahead and talk about the special abilities that you can use once and you can just select one. In a three player game, only the characters that have, only the player that has one left. So if it's one, if it's one ninja versus two samurai, that one ninja is going to get a special ability and the other guys won't and vice versa. They have different rules for that. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about these guys. Blowgun. Choose a samurai and shoot a poison dart at him. He dies on the next turn. This can't be countered. Uh, Metusub Metsubushi, a device used by putting one's mouth on one end of a blowing powder out of the other in order to blind his opponent. So move, this move negates the samurai's katana and your kunai still kills the target. Wow, that's awesome. Shurikens throw a shuriken at two ortho orthogonally adjacent targets. If countered Yumi from either target, you die. Uh, and then of course, moving diagonally. Wow, that's amazing. Um, we've got over here for the samurai, you've got stuff like if there's four or less samurai, place two more anywhere on the shogun's chambers. Force all ninja to reveal the last four actions on the tracking notepad so you can just see what they've been doing. 
Repairing alarms, you can fix two alarms at two locations. And then Showdown, shift all players to the Showdown's corridor and remove all of their locations. When two or less samurai left, it's a fight to the death, which is interesting as well. So there's quite a few different special abilities you can use. You can choose not to play with them or choose to play with them if you like. But the game is fairly simple. It's a card game that involves hidden movement. It's quick, it's fast. It has similarities to uh, Letters from Whitechapel, uh, the Dracula version, and um, Mr. X, all those kind of games, right? Spectre Ops. Uh, but it's very different in its own way, right? It's a very small board. It's very lim You're very limited on the number of cards you're going to be playing. You're going to be choosing to either move, attack, kunai. I mean, there's still a good amount, but it's just a thinner game that you can play over and over again. It's more travel friendly. It's in a very small box and it contains all you need. And you can still play up to four players, which is a good amount of play. Now, of course, it can be frustrating for any player to play these kind of hidden movement games because you think they're somewhere and then they're not somewhere and you trying to figure that out but for people who like that deduction and trying to basically use their reasoning skills to figure out where that ninja is and all that same time the ninja is very nervous because if the ninja gets hit twice he's done for because he used that smoke bomb or if he gets noticed three times because he uses the smoke bomb he's done for as well in general it's just once or noticed twice that smoke bomb is the extra little caveat the little bonus that he gets but it's still very nerve-wracking for the ninja so you're both always on your toes if you like a very simple uh, movement game hidden movement game that you can play really quickly rather quickly over and over again or while waiting in between games anything like that this is definitely a game i would suggest the artwork's super cool it all feels really flowy uh the cards can kind of con conjoined and messed up because there's so many like they, they all look very similar and have their own it's hard to tell which is the front and the back sometimes but overall the game's excellent it's very fun if you like this type of game i would definitely suggest checking it out especially if you want just a smaller thinner version of a larger game like fury of dracula